Hello and welcome to another episode of Rise of Flight with your host, Zar Peppers. Today I decided to start a new career um, game, especially for the channel. And here we have him, Pierre Avery. From the time he was young, Frenchman Pierre Avery always sought out adventure and loved sightseeing. His parents also enjoyed traveling. While he was young, his family went on trips all around Europe. Moscow, Istanbul, London, Berlin, Paris, Rome, Venice, and so on. Pierre had quite the childhood. He was always at the top of his class in school, and by the time he was 17, he was one of the smartest young men in his hometown of Orleans. Time went on, and for a while, Pierre traveled with his young girlfriend. Na, 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 na. What was that? No, 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 no. I have no idea. Together, they traveled farther than ever before to places such as New York, Gibalt, Gib Gibraltar, and Nassau. Yeah, that's that's how he said it. As he was not a poor man, his father was coincidentally an aeroplane designer, having had much to do with the design of the Newport One and Two and Four. Yeah, that's four, isn't it? The French government paid him generously for his work. Pierre thus was accustomed to money, adventure, and flight. Though he never directly showed any interest in airplanes, he had a slight curiosity in them, due to mainly his father's work. And I'm sure the next paragraph is then war came, and he thought flying in a plane would be really cool with machine guns strapped to it. So let's go. Daka, 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 daka. That is Pierre Avery, the man who we are going to follow from his start in aviation to possibly his end of his life. So, let's look at our missions for today. First mission is a reconnaissance patrol. We are not on that. That's for Leon. Um, but at 1,328, we have a balloon attack mission, of which I will be taking part in in my SPAD 13C1. All right, let's see our mission briefing. We're starting off at our airfield then heading east towards the target which is a balloon and then heading back with a very kind of awkward route i suppose should take a quick look at the primary objective follow your assigned route and destroy the enemy observation balloon marked on your map our infantry have been taking a beating it must be brought down and if you don't know what the uh, the balloons are they're essentially balloons with a little basket just behind the front line that essentially guys go up in to observe. That's why they call it called the observation balloons. So there's little guys sitting there taking down notes of what's on the other side or what the enemy defenses are like. So our job today is to shoot that down so that guy can have a really bad day. Alrighty, so here we are in our airplane. I have to remember in this aircraft to turn the fuel mixture up. We'll also get the radiator up there. Now we're just waiting for our buddies to start up. Alright, plane. It'd be nice if you started. I do have everything set correctly, don't I? There we go. I think. There we go. We're all good. We're all good. Sorry about all that, I was just making sure that my sound levels were actually all right this time. Okay, we've got a fuel mixture okay, we're just waiting for him. And let's roll. There we go, we're in the air. The problem is, when I'm using the track, I have to take my head away from the mic, and this is a very localized microphone made for only catching what's right in front of it. So, I apologize if throughout some of this you won't be able to hear me, but at least you'll be able to hear me a lot better generally than in the last episode of this. And in the Silent Hunter videos, which I haven't uploaded, well, I'm currently uploading it right now. Okay, it looks like we're not having any problems catching up with our friends. Nice day out. 
nice plane. All right, let's let's slow her down a bit. Actually, I'll gain some altitude. Gonna form up on the right of this guy. And we'll head over to the boot attack area. Now, like, like last time, I don't think I'm going to cut out the travel time because I sort of think that's a big part of the joy of games like this is not all about fighting. You just go, you gotta do the boring stuff too. Unless I just can't think of anything to talk about while I'm doing this. You know, I was doing some reading today about the arrestor gear that they used on these aircraft so the machine guns would shoot in between the propellers. I'm still not don't exact not entirely have my head around, wrapped around how it works exactly, but it is very interesting. Well, at least the Germans said that. I think the Allies just put armored plates on the back of their propellers, so if the bullet hit, they would just get deflected. I'm sure they figured out the arresting gear later in the war, but I think originally that's what they used. Just wanted to make sure there's no one below me. Alright, let's open my radiator air out full. I have a temp gauge. Yeah, I think I see my temperature gauge. What gauges do I all have in here? I think the second one to the right is my temperature gauge. So my temperature looks all right right now. I went with this plane instead because trying to aim with the the albatross is kind of tricky because you go to position yourself so you're actually looking through the gun sight. Now on this flight I went with the quote balloon machine guns instead. I have no idea what the difference is but I figured because I'm going after a balloon it might be a good idea but that might have had some nothing to do with why they're called that. At least I'm actually keeping up with my teammates on like I guess I should be looking behind me every now and then, unlike in the Albatross. Oh, looks like we're turning. Let's get a bit more altitude. I hope there's no one right above me. Hope this gaze is looking alright. Not letting off too much steam or smoke. I hope it's steam, not smoke. Track IR really makes these games so much better. It's I think track IR is a must-have for these flight sim games or many games. And like the dangerous and star citizen. Hear me guys. You can't you need to get that going. Chris Roberts. So I got a ways going to go to the front, so I think I may contradict what I said earlier and just cut this part out. <laughs> See you then. One question I have for people is, for the radiator, why is it controllable? Why why wouldn't you just always have your radiator at 100%? Is there a reason why you do want to lower it to 80 or 50%? Some interesting reason. Like, I always think of it more as an on-off switch, or more just something that automatically turns on when you start the plane. Looks like we're going to be going through a cloud. This might be interesting. Let's bring down our throttle a little bit. Although I think this thing has a radial engine rather than the inline six like the um, the Albatross, which should be air cooled. I could be completely wrong though; it may have an inline engine. It's tricky going through clouds in this game because you can't see anything, and you don't really have the right gauges to deal with that, like a pitch gauge and a horizontal 
indicator gauge. Although it doesn't seem like this clouds are too bad. Okay, we're almost at our second waypoint. Approaching the front. Don't see anyone. Oh shit, I don't see our guy. Oh yeah, there they are. Ooh. I have me worried there. Still gaining altitude. 1200 feet. Or meters. When it comes, I know I'm in a country that uses the metric system, but when it comes to aircraft, I am far more used to working in feet than meters. I have no idea what 1,200 meters is in feet. I guess when it comes to Imperial, there, Imperial, there's only one thing that I prefer using it for. You know, I do have to say this spad climbs pretty well. Like I'm a pretty good bitch, and I'm not really losing that much speed. Didn't expect this kind of climbing from a World War One aircraft. No one behind me. I always end up falling behind my teammates, but I'm always worried about running my engine at 100%. I have this in my mind that that's a bad thing, so if anybody knows otherwise, you could please let me know. I'd be greatly appreciate it. Because I always end up behind them. Might be because I'm taking too much fuel. Not sure. But we are gradually approaching the front. We're almost at our third waypoint. And after that, we're making our attack run. I love you, Track IR. Catching up now. Temperature looks alright. If that is indeed the temperature gauge. Man, we're pretty high. She's so high, high above me. She's so lovely. I'll stop now. I think we're a little bit high for attacking a balloon, though. I think we'd be better off going a bit lower, because they aren't this high. And trying to attack those things on a dive can be a bit tricky, I've found. There's the front line, the great menagerie of trenches that spread themselves all across France. France. Do 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 I'm not gonna do that. That's all you guys need is me sort of going do 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 to the French anthem for two minutes. Lost three subscribers. Four subscribers. There goes five, six, seven. Oh, what are you got do? Oh no, the they're at the waypoint, that's why they're turning. I thought they might be scrambling for something. Wish I knew where my roof counter was. Or a tachometer, if you want to use the technical term. Form up on this guy's right. Hello, my friend. How are you today? I'm going too fast. There we go, a little maneuver there. 
maneuver. Just gonna make English words sound French for my Francis palette. Actually, my family's French, and they all pretty much speak it, but nobody in my family ever bothered to teach their kids French, so we don't know any of it. I don't. I wish I did. I sort of feel... Oh, great, now I'm talking about my family and how I feel like I'm going to disappoint them by not learning French, even though no one really cares. All right, time to go for the clouds. Really wish we had some modern gauges right now. Really wish we did. Gonna come out of this cloud and find I'm pointing directly towards the ground. Okay, good. Alright, we should be... I should start looking for this balloon. But it's pretty close. Here comes the AA. Alright, where are you, balloon? I think I see it up ahead. Thought it was an anti aircraft puff at first, but no, I think it's the balloon. Engine temperature's alright. No one about to shoot me up. Don't see any other aircraft in the vicinity. Don't know where my teammates went, but I'm There they are. You know what? I'm just going to go for the balloon. That is the mission. I'll just assume they're watching my back. Hello, balloon. Here I come. I guess this is pretty good target practice. My only problem is I'm used to Elite Dangerous in space games where I use the yaw a lot, but when you use yaw in flight sims like this, it just gets all shaky and it's kind of awkward. Okay, balloon. Sure hope no one's going to come up behind me because this is taking all of my concentration. Get my sight lined up. I see another aircraft behind it. All right, here I come. Let's power down a bit. Get ourselves all nice and land up. Small control, small action, small, small adjustments. That's a key to these simulators. You can't just go whacking things around. It's about finesse. It's all about finesse. Okay. Let's start opening fire. Throttle down so I don't wreck my engine. I'm gonna kill you, balloon. Oh, I think I got it. It's, it's burning. Mission accomplished now. Try and find my teammates and not get shot out of the sky. Of course, they've all effed off like they always do. I believe those are German, and I also believe they're coming for me.
Those might be my mates. Well. I'm not going to scramble off like a little baby. No, I'm pretty sure those are my guys because I wouldn't think the Germans would be. Oh, crap. I think I've got company. That I most certainly do. That ain't good. That's definitely not good. It's ever hard to get off these guys. Alright, let's do a little stall. And down. Where are they? Oh no. Okay, well, it looks like Pierre Avery didn't last particularly long. All right, so at this point, um, since this whole series is about me getting back into flight simulators, I wanted to go over the last few minutes of this engagement and try and point out things that I could have done better or mistakes that I made. So here we go. So here, I just, this was right after the maneuver that I went to try and get on his belly so he can get a firing solution. Oh, now I think I'm trying to dive to get a bit more energy but the big mistake that I That's made here was turning hard because I bled off just far too much speed. I would have been better if I tried to off these guys. go in a relatively straight line while making maneuvers to make it harder to get a firing solution. Now here this right, was the last desperate stall. attempt to get them in front of me. And Unfortunately, it didn't really work. I'm focusing on this guy. Oh no. Who then manages to turn around and get a firing solution. That's I think first and foremost, I was underrating the abilities of the AI, expecting it to be an easy Is engagement like these guys? past ones were. It was also a two-on-one scenario with my buddies effing off doing whatever they were doing. All right, let's so I was stall. at a disadvantage to begin with, but that and hardly means down. that it was impossible right. for me to get out of it. it. may have been hard, but with enough skill, I should have been able to, or at least I could have been able to, come out on top in this scenario. Oh, no. But if anybody else has some suggestions or notes on what I could have done differently, please leave them. Okay, well, it looks like Pierre Avery... Stop talking over me, me didn't last particularly shush, shush. long. Post them in the comments below. So, Maybe that's it for the Shut Up, this episode of Rise of Light with Czar Peppers. So, until next time, don't forget to like and subscribe. Good night.